Thank you for continuing your education with us about water treatment. In this second video, we'll discuss hard water versus soft water. It's easy to forget how important water is in our everyday lives. Since most of our body is made up of water, it is a necessity in our diet. But in our homes, it also performs an important role. It is a fluid medium that carries material from one place to the next. And one of the reasons it does this job well is that it's very good at holding things, either by suspending them or dissolving them. So if water is so good at suspending and dissolving things, why are the dishes you thought were washed covered with spots? Why does the water in your shower leave a film on everything it touches? Why has the water that you thought was clean clogged up your pipes or damaged an appliance? Rain and water in the ground pass over different things and pick up soluble bits of whatever they come in contact with. While this process sometimes means contamination and makes water unfit to drink, in many cases it simply means that the water contains minerals found on the earth. Of these, calcium and magnesium are of particular importance because they affect the water's ability to function in our homes. These minerals make our water hard. Hard water is water that contains high dissolved minerals, specifically calcium and magnesium. Hard water is not a health risk, but instead a nuisance because of the buildup on fixtures and the lack of soap lathering. Instead of soap dissolving completely, soap combines with the minerals to form a coagulated soap curd. The soap curd in laundry can work its way into your clothes when being washed and helps to keep dirt trapped in the fibers, often stiffening the fabric and reducing its life expectancy or graying whites. It has the same effect on your skin and hair, leaving them lifeless. Another reason to be concerned about hard water is its effect on your plumbing system. Calcium and magnesium deposits can build up in your pipes, reducing water flow. In water heaters, these minerals generate a scale buildup that reduces the efficiency and life of the water heater. So what is the solution if you have hard water problems? The solution for many years has been a water softener first introduced in 1903. This was the first time water treatment moved from a prevention of waterborne diseases to the creation of softer, less mineralized water. The theory of ion exchange, which removed a less desirable mineral for a salt ion, would greatly impact the water treatment industry in years to come and is still a popular water treatment method. So how does a softener work? The typical water softener is a mechanical device that's plumbed into your home's water supply system. All water softeners use the same operating principle. They trade minerals for something else, in most cases sodium. The process is called ion exchange. The heart of a water softener is its mineral tank. The mineral tank is filled with small polystyrene beads, also known as resin or zeolite. The beads carry a negative charge. Calcium and magnesium in water both carry positive charges. Because of the positive charge, these minerals will lightly cling to the beads as the hard water passes through the mineral tank. Sodium ions, which have a lower positive charge than that of calcium and magnesium, are flushed through as a very strong brine solution. As the brine solution is flushed through the tank, the beads already saturated with calcium and magnesium drive the calcium and magnesium minerals off the resin beads. Water softeners have a separate brine tank that uses common salt to create this brine solution. In normal operation, hard water moves into the mineral tank and the calcium and magnesium ions move to the beads, replacing sodium ions, usually at a rate of 2 to 1, or in some instances even higher based on the efficiency of the softener. So more hardness in the water creates more salt transferred into your home. Once the beads are saturated with calcium and magnesium, the unit enters a three-phase regenerating cycle. First, the backwash phase reverses water flow to flush dirt out of the tank. In the recharge phase, the concentrated sodium-rich salt solution is carried from the brine tank through the mineral tank. The sodium collects on the beads, replacing the calcium and magnesium, which go down the drain. Once this phase is over, the final phase flushes the mineral tank of excess brine and the brine tank is refilled. Hard water is measured in grains per gallon or parts per million. Generally, grains is used in home water treatment and parts per million in pool water chemistry. A grain is equal to 64.8 milligrams of calcium or magnesium bicarbonate. The American Society of Agricultural Engineers defined water hardness this way. Water treatment devices which do not remove calcium and magnesium cannot be called water softeners and sometimes are referred to by the term water conditioners or water purification systems. What are the advantages of soft water? Soft water is virtually a spot-free system that does not leave spots on silverware, glassware, or dishes. Soaps and shampoos react well with salt and lather better. 
Detergents easily rinse out of soft water, reducing your annual soap usage. The slimy feeling, which is often associated with soft water, will leave skin and hair cleaner and add life back into them. Clothes tend to last longer due to the hard water minerals not getting trapped in them and soaps being completely rinsed out of the fabric. Soft water also does not leave chalk or orange rings around bathtubs and sinks. Soft water doesn't clog your pipes or reduce flow rates. Appliances and fixtures last longer and use less energy than a clogged or corroded appliance. So if a softener does so many great things, why are there so many new technologies coming into the industry and taking market share away from them? Soft water that is heated becomes more aggressive at leaching metals from water lines. Lead and solder joints and copper and pipes are vulnerable to this phenomenon and are two metals that should not be in your water. Hot or warm softened water from the tap should never be used for cooking or drinking water as it could be higher in heavy metals and undesirable salt. Without the right maintenance, the zeolite beads from a water softening system may back siphon into your toilet tanks and plumbing, creating a very expensive repair bill. The soft water may attack vital plumbing parts like heating elements and water heaters. Salt is an abrasive material and may cause etching of glassware or shower doors over time. A water softener doesn't remove chlorine, VOCs, THMs, heavy metals, or other unwanted contaminants from your water. A softener is not a green product. It can be costly to run since they can waste up to 120 gallons for every 1,000 delivered, using more water and electricity on every regenerative cycle. The discharge of salt brines from the regeneration of water softeners into the wastewater collection system has become a real problem. Several states have enacted softener legislation controlling the sale of water softeners and or the discharge of salt brine into the ecosystem. There are contradictory results about salt and the dangers it presents to humans. A paper by Kansas State University gives this example. A person who drinks two liters of extremely hard water that has been softened will consume 480 milligrams of additional sodium per day than if unsoftened water were to be consumed. The American Heart Association suggests 3% of the population who must follow a severe, self-restricting diet should not consume more than 500 milligrams of sodium a day. The American Heart Association suggests no more than 10% of the 500 milligrams of sodium intake per day should come from water. The American Society of Agricultural Engineers put this chart together to define the sodium in your water based on the hardness in your home's water supply. Once in water, sodium is difficult to remove. Distillation and reverse osmosis are slow methods that can be used to produce small quantities of drinking water. Often bottled water is thought to be sodium free. However, this is often not the case. Read the label and write to the company and ask if the label does not display sodium content. So how do you calculate the levels of salt in your home? By using either of the two included calculations. Hopefully we have helped you to understand the benefits and pitfalls of softened water. So when is a softener the right choice for you? Do you have any dietary concerns like hypertension, diabetes, osteoporosis, high blood pressure, obesity, or heart disease? Are the white spots so disturbing to you that the benefits of mineralized water outweigh the cleanliness issues? If you answered no to the first question and yes to the second, then a softener is probably the right choice for you. Remember to add a carbon-based filter with it to remove chlorine and other contaminants and at least a five-stage reverse osmosis system for drinking and cooking water. If you answered yes to the first question and no to the second, then a softener should be avoided and an alternative water treatment method should be used to obtain chlorine contaminant free whole house water. We have made an attempt to answer as many questions about hard and soft water as we could in this short video. If you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to contact us. Look to our third video where we will discuss mineralized versus demineralized water.